Hello and welcome. This is Scott at MechSoft. This demonstration will give you the basics for two and a half axis pocketing capabilities found in Visual Mill. This demonstration part is an electrical box that will be machined out of solid material. As you can see, there are two pockets in it, and I will create three pocketing operations to form these two pockets. To start the machining, I'll bring in the Machining Operations Browser. You'll notice that I've already created a preliminary facing operation to remove the material off the top of the part exposing the pockets so we can machine them. To create a pocketing operation, make sure that you are under the Program tab, Machining Operations, then select the Two Axis option. Use the drop down arrow and select Pocketing. This will bring up the pocketing dialog. Now for this first pocketing operation, I want to machine this very shallow region where the lid of this main pocket will fit. I will select one of the top edges of that shallow region and use the SOLIDWORKS function to further select the connecting tangent edges which will complete the closed region. Then I will indicate that the selection is complete and now the operation will use that series of edges as the containment region for the pocket. For this job I have predefined two cutters. I'm going to use the 26 mm diameter end mill for this operation. For the feeds and speeds I will load the feeds and speeds that have been previously defined with the tool. For the clearance plane the system will check for the highest Z position of the stock and I will add 6 mm above that for all rapid traverse moves. For the cut parameters, I want the side stock to be zero because I'm going to finish the walls. I want the cut pattern to be offset cuts, climb cut, and the start point to be on the inside. The step over will be calculated as 40% of the tool diameter. Now I'll define the cut levels. When I originally selected the containment region, I selected it at the top of the wall. This parameter reflects that and must be set correctly. This means that the depth of cut will be interpreted as being below the cut region geometry. I don't know the full depth, so I'm going to use a built-in analysis function that allows me to select two parallel planar surfaces at the top and bottom of the pocket wall, which will then calculate the depth of that wall. Now, let's go to the entry exit. I want the tool to ramp into the material at 15 degrees directly above one of the generated cut segments of the path. For the retract, I'll specify a simple linear retract at 45 degrees. And now I'm ready to generate the path. And there's the tool path for the lid recess. Now since most of the parameters will stay the same, I'll immediately create another pocketing operation for the main pocket. I will then define the new region at the top of the main pocket as I did before by selecting a single edge and causing the system to find the adjacent tangent edges that complete the region and I'll accept that. I'm going to use the same cutter so the tool, feeds and speeds and clearance plane will all remain the same. Let's take a look at the cut parameters. I want the wall stock to be zero because I'm finishing the walls. Again, I want the cut pattern to be offset curves, climb cut, start point inside, and the step over to be 40% of the tool diameter. Now, let's go to the cut levels. As before, I selected the cut region at the top of the pocket, so make sure this is set correctly and I will use the analysis function to measure the height of this wall as well. This is the total depth of cut and I can break that total depth into roughing and finishing levels. This time I want a final finishing depth of two millimeters at the floor and that will reduce the remaining roughing depth by that two millimeters. Now this roughing depth can be broken into sublevels. This parameter defines how deep each sublevel should be, and I want them to be 12 millimeters. Now I'm ready to generate the path. Now, for variety's sake, I'm going to create the pocketing operation for the second pocket 
by copying an existing operation of the same type. I will select a pocketing operation, do Control C to copy it, Control V to paste it, and then drag the new operation to the bottom of the list and drop it there. And I'll rename that operation. Now I'll edit that operation by double clicking on it. I'll clear the regions list and select two new regions, one at the top of the pocket and one at the top of the island. In this case, I'll use the select loop function to complete the closed regions. The yellow arrows help you select the proper loop for the region. The system evaluates these multiple closed regions and takes the outermost region as the pocket shape and any smaller inside regions as islands. Now I want to briefly point out a very nice feature here. This island is shorter than the walls of the pocket. That means that the cut pattern will not consider the island until the cutter has descended below the top of the island as you would expect. I will select the smaller tool. I will update the feeds and speeds to that new tool. The clearance plane will be the same. For the cut parameters, the stock will be zero, offset cuts, climb cut, start on the inside, and 40% step over between passes. Now again, let's define the cut levels. The cut region was selected at the top of the pocket. Make sure that is set correctly. The full depth has been determined to be 38 millimeters. I want 2 millimeters as a finishing level at the floor and that leaves 36 millimeters as the total roughing depth. And I'm going to break that up into sublevels, each of which will be 8 millimeters deep. Because I have an island in this pocket, I'm going to set this clear island tops option. Now I'll generate the toolpath. And there it is. I'll simulate this final operation and end the demonstration here. I hope this demonstration will help you to program pockets in your parts using Visual Mill. Thank you.